So everyone has goals, but sometimes accomplishing those goals are easier said than done. I learned this lesson just this year, actually. I'm usually not the type of person to do New Year's resolutions, but to switch things up, I wanted to just make a list of all of my goals throughout the year. And so I, <laughs> I basically wrote down the entire year, everything that I wanted to achieve. I broke it down into quarters too, but what I found was that it was just way too much. I just put too much on my plate, you know? I wanted to, I wanted to make money, I wanted to get a certain amount of clients, I wanted to do things. That, there were just a bunch of random things too that like weren't even, didn't even have anything to do with my business or with my, uh, with my career. It was just, it, it was too much is what I'm trying to say. It wasn't until just recently that I really tried to narrow down on specific goals and the main ones that I wanted to achieve that I started seeing some pretty incredible results right off the bat. To give you an example of how this, how I just did this, I just started running this month because I'm planning on going on a Spartan race with some buddies here in October. The first run that I did was just a one mile run I've done hit cardio before so I've, you know i've run and then i've taken breaks to walk but this is the first time that i just ran a mile in at least five years it, it might be even longer than that too it might have been more like seven years it took me about 10 minutes which you know it's not it's not terrible like i'm a fit guy i've been bodybuilding for the past three years so i'm i was hoping to at least get under 10. part of my focused goals that i've been working on recently has involved running obviously with the race coming up last week so three weeks after running my 10 minute mile i ran a mile in 529. <laughs> they don't know me son half using the method that i'm about to teach you right now about how to crush your goals relentlessly this is gonna be a, a little bit of a different video than what I'm nor I normally do. Uh, if you don't know me, I'm Zerk. I'm a, a personal trainer, fitness coach online, and I make videos about fitness, mindset, and or now this is my first mindset video that I'm actually doing, but I'm wanting to branch out you know, a little bit on YouTube, work on building my personal brand. So just wanna thank you real quick if you're watching this video, and I promise you I'm gonna give you everything that I have to ensure that whatever your goals are, you're gonna be able to crush them. I'm, I'm really trying to provide as much value as I can. So right off the bat, um, if you have any questions at the end of the video, don't hesitate to comment or uh, you know shoot me a DM on Instagram, anything like that. This one's just really important to me. And I think that this could help a lot of people um, regardless of what your goals are, whether if you're trying to, you know, if you're trying to start your own coaching business, if you're trying to, you know, hit a PR in the gym, if you're trying to, <laughs> I, at pretty much any goal, if you use this five-step system, it's gonna work. Like obviously you're gonna have to take action no matter what, you can apply these five steps. If you don't take action, nothing's gonna happen. But using these five steps, action is almost going to happen naturally if you do them in the right way. So I don't even wanna, I don't wanna waste any more of your time. We're gonna hop right into this right now. So the first thing that you have to do is you have to write your goals down with a deadline. You hear a lot of uh, stuff about manifesting, right? About how, oh, you have to put it into the universe and then uh, that way it can become whatever it is. That's, that's a bit woo woo. And I can understand why that would turn certain people off. But the reason why so many people say that and believe it is because it's true to an extent. The way that I look at it is whenever you say something or whenever you write something down, you're not just like putting it out into the universe. That's not what you're doing. What you're doing you're engraving that goal into your subconscious mind so you have two you have two minds or i think freud says that you have three whatever but like uh, to, to make it simple you have your conscious mind and your subconscious mind so your conscious mind is obviously that's what you you think you, that's the the words that are in your head that you choose to think my by me speaking right now i'm speaking with my conscious mind i am creating thoughts and I am organizing those thoughts and then putting them out into words. Your subconscious mind, on the other hand, this is the one that works in the back. It doesn't always follow what you want it to do. It, it does, like you program your subconscious mind, whether you realize it or not, but it operates in the back automatically. It's the autopilot system. These are where your beliefs are formed. 
this is where like whatever you dream that's your subconscious mind you know creating the images um it's it's what forms your habits uh your discipline all of it that's your subconscious mind in the back autopilot mode right so whenever you write your goals down on a piece of paper for whatever reason writing it seems to solidify it in your subconscious better than just thinking it does so it, there's nothing magical about the paper but the kind of the crazy part about it is the fact that you're actually engraving that goal into your subconscious mind and it's almost like that goal is going to start working on itself automatically so now you're working two times as hard your your conscious mind you're working towards the goals by the actions that you take but also your subconscious mind is constantly seeking ways that you can achieve that goal quicker and more efficiently and that's the important part about the deadline too you have to write a time by or, yeah a deadline that you want to achieve the goal by for one consciously you're going to realize that you have time your time's running out I mean, you got to get to work. You've got to start doing the actions right now. But also that, again, that subconscious mind is going to be working in the background trying to close that gap. Because what you're doing, you're creating cognitive dissonance. So you believe, you believe in your mind because you wrote this on a piece of paper. You know, for example, let, let me say, I'm going to get uh, 10 client, ten more clients by the end of the year. Now, my subconscious mind believes in a way that... I'm gonna have those 10 clients by the end of the year. Or my conscious mind believes that. So now my subconscious mind is gonna try and close that gap between reality and the potential reality. This sounds really whack. I, I understand like if, if, the, if this is a little bit too weird for you and it, it might sound pretty weird, like I'm just making this stuff up, but I want you to understand that this is some actual stuff right here. This is um, tons of different YouTubers have talked about it and it's been used for since the beginning of time, right? This is what visualization is. This is what manifestation is. It's simply training your subconscious mind to work alongside you instead of against you because your beliefs play a huge role in the goals that you're going to accomplish. If you don't believe that you can achieve a goal, you're not going to achieve it. Simple as that, P point blank period. And there's nothing that you can do that's going to override a disbelief other than a belief. So you need to you need to focus on training your mind to be able to work on those goals. You might you might be tempted to think oh, like oh yeah I don't really need to do this I'm going to do it. You got to do it, man. You you have to write it down. This is going to be the make or break of if you're going to achieve your goals or not. And it, there's again, there's nothing magic about the paper. There's nothing magic about the keyboard. You're not putting it into the universe and it's going to give it back. No. What you're doing is you're sent, you're just training your brain. You're you are using more of your brain power for lack of a better term. This sounds so whack. Your subconscious mind is way more powerful than you realize it is. So you need to be engraving those beliefs. You need to be writing this stuff down because that's going to get you there like 10 times faster. Number 2 is the law of identity. You need to change your internal identity. We'll go back to the example of getting 10 clients by the end of the year. Say I want 10 online coaching clients by the end of the year. In order for me to achieve that, I need to stop viewing myself as an imposter and like a fake coach, you know, trying to get started a beginner or whatever, and start viewing myself as a fitness professional. I need to start thinking like a fitness professional, telling myself, yeah, I'm a coach. I know what I'm talking about. I know how to I know how to ca calculate macros. I know how to build workout routines. I know how to get these people results. Whatever identity you adopt, the actions that you take are almost automatically going to want to prove that identity to be true. So for example, let's say I want to be a bodybuilder. If I adopt the mindset of a bodybuilder, if I adopt the identity of a bodybuilder, tell myself, okay, I'm a bodybuilder, I'm a bodybuilder, I'm going to start training like a bodybuilder. I'm going to start, you know, eating the chicken and rice as opposed to the McChickens and fries. I'm going to start making more decisions that are going to get me to where I want to be because I have adopted the identity of whatever it is that I am trying to achieve. Self-image is insanely important when it comes to your goals. If you keep on viewing yourself as a beginner or an imposter or a novice, whatever it is that isn't what you're trying to achieve, your brain, your subconscious mind, 
that we talked about in the last step, that same subconscious mind is going to seek to prove yourself right. So let's say, for example, you know, I'm, I view myself as an imposter. I'm like, oh man, I can't be a coach. I can't get this guy results. You know, I've, I've only had three, I only have three clients and, um, none of them are anything like this one client that I'm trying to sign on. Like there's just, you know, there's no way that I'm going to be able to get this person results. My subconscious mind is then going to seek to validate those beliefs. And so that's going to automatically make me fail. If I switch my mindset, if I switch my identity and say, no, you know what? I'm a coach. I took two exams to become a certified fitness professional. I've built my own workout programs. I've done the running. I've done the no mobility routines. I've helped my clients, you know, get better results. They're losing weight. They're becoming more mobile. They're becoming stronger. I can do this. I am qualified in this position. I am a coach. I'm coach Z. I'm coach Micah. I'm coach whatever your name is. You start thinking like that. You adopt that mindset. Your subconscious mind, again, is going to be working with you as opposed to against you. You're going to be trying to prove yourself right at that point. So guess what I'm going to start doing? I'm going to start making better workout routines for my clients. I'm going to start, you know, working on my app, getting the systems set up so that I'm able to track everything more efficiently and make modifications when needed. I'm just going to start performing these actions that are automatically going to get me in a more successful position. Now, I don't want you to think that just because I'm thinking this stuff, it means I'm automatically going to start doing the hard work. That's not how it works. What we're doing here is we're organizing that what David Goggins calls that mental garage. David Goggins, you know, he said discipline is awesome, but it doesn't work unless if you've already done that internal work, unless if you've already cleaned up that mental garage, unless if you've already adjusted your mindset to get you prepared for that action, that action isn't going to last. It kind of goes both ways here, right? You need action, but you can't have action without the mindset and you need mindset. But if you don't have the action to accompany the mindset, then what good does the mindset do for you? You need both and both of them are going to help reaffirm each other. Every single time that I help a client, every single time that I help them get the results that they're looking for, that's going to reaffirm in my mind, okay, yeah, you know what? I'm a good coach. And if I'm a good coach, I'm going to continue to do the things that make me a good coach. You start going into this circle, this, this vortex of success. That's what you want to get into. Once you gain that momentum, nothing's going to be able to stop you. You're going to come across obstacles. Obviously that's always going to happen. But now, because you know, understand the mindset of whatever you're trying to be, you can take the steps necessary to get you there. And then that's just going to help you build momentum and continue to do the work that you need to do in order to get those results. So step three is one that not many people are going to tell you. It's not a very popular one, but Hamza, Hamza talks about this one. And I 100% agree with him. So you have to study and understand your competition. Today on social media, it's extremely popular for everybody to say, oh yeah, you know, I, I don't compete against others. I only compete against myself. I don't compare myself to others. I only, I only compare myself to my past self. You know what I mean? Look at all the progress that I'm making. Look at, look how, uh, look how awesome I am. You know, <laughs> like, I, I, I don't compete against anyone else. I just compete against myself. Here's the thing. That's great for a measurement of how far you've come and how much uh, how much you've improved upon yourself. But when it comes to to goals in business, when it comes to goals in sports, when it comes to goals in the real life world, you're not competing against yourself. Whatever, let's say for, I'm going to share a bit of my goals right now, for example. My goal, my three-year plan is in three years, I want to be an online coach making 10K a month living in Florida, living in Miami in particular. I want to be a, a coach in Miami um, just because I want to be in a bigger city because bigger cities hold more opportunity, more networking opportunities, more opportunity for money, for growth, for business, etc. There's somebody out there, thousands, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands, you put a number on it. There are a certain amount of people out there who want the exact same apartment that I want in Miami. There are people out there that want to build the exact same network that I want to build. There are people out there that want the exact same future wife that I want. I'm not competing against myself. 
as much as I want to say that, as much as I want to say, I'm only competing against myself and because, uh, you know, I'm, I'm and I'm going to run around in a grassy meadow and play with butterflies or whatever. That's not how the world works. You are not competing against yourself in the real world. In the real world, there are other people, there are other men that are working harder than you, that want what you want more than you want it. And that should scare you. That should, that should put, I'm getting, I get chills whenever I start talking about this every single time. You need to understand that just pushing yourself enough, sometimes that's not enough because there are going to be guys out there. You know what? You, you, you reached out to one person, you know, on Instagram for a, uh, for a coaching consultation and they turned you down and you're just like, well, you know, at least I got one. There's somebody out there who he spent and he spent three hours just contacting as many people in his network as he possibly could. And he landed five consultations and you didn't even land a single one. But you're thinking, oh yeah, you know, I, I did better than yesterday because I didn't reach out to anyone yesterday. There's an unhealthy way to do this too. So for example, you know, like in fitness, you know, you're trying to get in shape. It's obviously going to take time. You don't want to compare yourself to a guy that's like, if you're just getting into the gym, you don't want to compare yourself to a guy that, you know, he's been bodybuilding for three years and he's jacked, he's jacked out of his mind. That's unhealthy. That's not a good thing to do. But when it comes to pushing yourself, when it comes to trying to accomplish your goals, you have to understand that your goals aren't that unique and that there are a lot of people that want the exact same goals as you. Let me ask you this. If everyone in the world achieved the exact same goal that you're trying to achieve, how much would that goal be worth? Nothing. Because if everybody has it, then it, see, it, it no longer holds value. Accomplishment only exists by comparison. And you can compare yourself, you compare it to yourself all you want. And that's, and to be honest with you, it's not a bad thing. You should compare yourself to your past self too. But what I'm trying to get at is if everybody, ha everybody else in the entire world had the same thing that you have, that thing would no longer have value. You can't, there, there's no such thing as being jacked if there's, if fat people cease to exist. It's like the, it's like freaking syndrome from the Incredibles. You know, he says, if everybody's super, nobody will be. It's, it's the exact same principle here. You have to understand that as much as the media wants to tell you, as much as everybody wants to tell you, oh yeah, you know, don't, don't compare yourself to others. Only compare yourself to yourself. You're not competing against anybody. You're only competing against yourself. No, you are hundred percent competing with other men, other men that want what you want more. And we're going to get to how to overcome that in just a couple in the, in the fifth step. But I just want you to be aware of that. We, we really need to readjust that mindset. We need to be a little bit more competitive than we actually are because it's just, I used to think the same way too, but then I started thinking back to whenever I started going to the gym and you know, what actually like made me like get mass like really quick was I would compare myself to other guys in the gym. There was one guy in particular, he was jacked. He was around my age too. He, um, <laughs> it sounds stupid, but he got like, he got a lot of attention by the girls and like he was, he was lifting more than me. He, he just like looked better than me too. And like, whenever I saw him, every time that I saw him, I was just like, okay, I'm gonna be better than that guy. I'm gonna get bigger than that guy. I'm gonna get more jacked than that guy. I'm gonna be lifting more weight than that guy. I'm gonna be better than him. Not because like I, I think that I'm worth more than him, or that I think that, like not in a narcissistic way, but just like, that's what drove me. That was like, okay, this guy, you know, he thinks he's, he thinks he's about it. I'm gonna show him what I'm about. I'm a, I'm gonna get more Jack than him. Not because I'm better than him, just because I'm gonna work harder and just because I'm gonna be more consistent with it. And I'm gonna prove to myself that I can do it. I'm gonna prove to everyone else too. And I may or may not have gotten bigger than him then. So step four is learning how to endure. So I forgot like one micro step in here. You could in between step three and four, you could say take action, but really you should be taking action, you know, as soon as af after step two. So like after you've written the goal down, after you change your identity, you've taken action and now you understand um, that you're competing against others. Now step four is you need to learn to endure. So if you think of like a marathon, who wins the, the marathon? Who do you think it is? You might answer the most fit person, but 
in a marathon, don't you think just about everybody is going to be in the same physical condition? Because these guys, are they're all competitive, so they're all going to be training hard. They're all going to be uh, trying to get into the best physical t condition possible. The person who, win who wins the long-distance race is the one who's able to handle the most amount of pain. One who's able to deal with the most intense burn. The, the one with the strongest mind over matter. That's the one who's going to win the race. Because you look at the end, you know, it's sometimes it's just a hair. Sometimes a guy is only, you know, just a couple inches in front of the other one. The reason why is because they're about in the same physical condition. But one of them, the winner, his mindset is different. His mind over matter is on another level than everyone else. He's able to take all of that pain and get through it more efficiently than anyone else. And that's one of the biggest measures of your success is your ability to handle pain, the ability to handle stress. Certain goals, you know, sometimes it's easy to get started or to convince yourself that you, you've gotten started. But a lot of times after you've, you've gotten started, that's whenever you start to come into these obstacles. That's whenever you start to feel pain. And that's whenever David Goggins talks about it. You start to get that fight or flight and no, you're no longer thinking rationally. You're only thinking, I need to get out of here because this is uncomfortable. You know, pain uh, receptors, they have their importance. Like you think of like the primal, like human being, like the first humans, the reason why we had that pain instinct and like those pain receptors is to let us know that something was wrong, to let us know that, we, hey, we have to get out of here, otherwise we might die. But today, the pain that we experience most of the time is not life or death. And so it becomes an obstacle for us. We begin to think that because we're experiencing a little bit of discomfort that we're going to die. Think about the freaking Vikings thousands of years ago, man. Or I guess a thousand years ago, not that, not, not terribly long ago. It would have been, yeah, you know, like a thousand years ago, give or take 1200 years ago, whatever. These Vikings, they thought it was actually it was actually seen as like dishonorable and shameful to grow old because they thought it was a valiant and noble thing to die for a purpose. And, you know, they, they thought they would go to Valhalla after that. They were they weren't afraid of anything. They weren't afraid of the pain. You know, they would have you know, they would get killed in the most brutal ways. And if they screamed, they believed that they wouldn't get to go to Valhalla. So they would just stay silent while they were being, you know, brutally murdered. You know, the Civil War. Imagine, you know, being 18 and being in the Civil War, one of the bloodiest wars, or the bloodiest wars, what they call it, of America, of our country. If you're from America, you might be from, you know, another country if you're watching this, I'm not sure. But just, you know, just imagine like those wars, like 18 year olds fighting in those. These fights were brutal. World War II, can you imagine being on D-Day, going up on that beach, knowing, you know, hearing machine guns blaring, watching flamethrowers, you know, killing soldiers around you these were 18 to 21 year olds doing this stuff fast forward to, to 2023 we have 18 year old men 19 year old men 20 year old men taking mental health breaks uh from work from their jobs at starbucks mcdonald's pizza hut because because they think that their job is too uh, mentally stressful for them to be able to handle what I'm trying to get at is we are so soft nowadays. We have the, like, the amount of, our pain tolerance has gone down so much. You need to train that. You need to realize that the pain that you're going through is nothing in comparison to the pain that our ancestors went through. Our ancestors went to war at your age however old you're watching this like 18 19 20 if you're around my age these guys were going to war straight up war they were killing other people they were watching their friends get killed they were away from home they didn't have their parents around them they didn't have a they, <laughs> they didn't have health insurance they weren't worried about that they were worried about oh i wonder if i'm they got shot in the arm and they were wondering if they would get to keep their arm if they got to go home meanwhile today we can't we can't go to the gym because we're you know it's, it's been too stressful of a day you can't make it to the gym because you you're just too stressed from your eight hour shift at a fast food restaurant you can't 
you play video games to cope with the fact that you don't enjoy your life. You'd rather play video games than go into the gym and you know, actually do some hard work and, and develop your life. And yet you complain about mental health. You complain about the, your, your depression when you're, you're doing the exact things that make your depression worse. You need to develop a killer's pain tolerance. You need to constantly do tough stuff to overcome that impulse of, I want to get out of here. I feel like I'm going to die. The reality is the pain that you experience today, if you live in a first world country, if you're living in America, Canada, the UK, you know, any of these places, you feel a little bit of pain. You think you're going to die. No, that pain is not going to kill you. That pain is going to take you to the next level. That pain is actually a blessing. You've been viewing pain as like this, this bad thing. Like you're trying to get rid of the pain, but what you don't understand is that the pain holds the reward that you're looking for. See, I just picked up running and I used to not be able to, to push myself very far. Now, since I picked up running, I've developed a new relationship with pain. I understand that if I go another half a mile, I'm not gonna die. But instead, I'm just gonna get benefit from that. I'm gonna get meaningful dopamine as opposed to the dopamine that I get on my phone watching YouTube or, or playing God of War on my PlayStation. If you, can't, if you can't make it to the gym, you know, three times a week, if you can't run a mile, if you can't stay disciplined enough to not play video games after you get off work, how do you possibly expect to start a business? to get rich, to, to make 10, 10K a month, which isn't even rich in today's age, but still. If you wanna achieve something that you've never achieved before, you need to go through pain that you've never experienced before. You need to be able to push yourself further than you've ever pushed yourself before. Your pain tolerance is some pussy level stuff. You are a pussy. You need to feel that pain, every little bit of it, and continue to proceed anyway. And I'm probably gonna be making a video here of how to how I deal with pain personally and how I'm able to persevere over that. But just understand that the, the main way to deal with it is to just understand that it's not gonna kill you and it's not gonna last forever. That's how you override pain, just like that. It's easier said than done, but if you can do that, you can get through any pain. Just understand that the pain isn't gonna last forever and train that tolerance to be able to handle more. And finally, we get to step five, which is this is probably my favorite, but this is kind of the step that, I've in, that I'm in right now. Uh, I'm kind of in a mixture of four and five, to be honest with you, but step five is you need to become a psychopath. You need to become crazy. You need to become obsessed. What comes to your mind whenever I say these names? Michael Jordan, Kobe Bryant, David Goggins, Mike Tyson, Conor McGregor, Kanye West, Vincent Van Gogh, all of these guys have like two things in common mainly. One is the fact that they are the best of the best in their industries. And two is the fact that people view them as crazy because they have something called the eye of the tiger. These guys are the best of the best, but they didn't get there by accident. Michael Jordan, you know, people, you've seen all the memes about how people talk about how Michael Jordan was a psycho, the, the fire in his eyes. It's because Michael Jordan was obsessed with winning, obsessed with basketball. Basketball was his craft. It was his, his child, essentially. It was everything that he was putting all of his energy into. And the same goes for all of them. You know, Vincent Van Gogh, he was a painter, but he cut his ear off one time because he got so mad he was that passionate about painting he was getting frustrated I, I think that a painting wasn't going the way that he wanted to and he just freaking cuts his ear off the, these guys were crazy you know Kanye you've seen I mean do I even need to explain about Kanye but he's still you can't argue he's one of the greatest musicians of our if not the greatest musician producer rapper of our generation Dude, if you haven't listened to Life of Pablo, go check it out. Listen to Life of Pablo. Listen to my beautiful Dark Twisted Fantasy. Listen to College Dropout. That's some high quality music right there.
all of these guys, they were the best of the best, but they were just insanely obsessed to the point that everybody outside of them, regular people, they looked at these guys and they thought that they were crazy. They think that there's something wrong with them and they think that they don't want to live the lives that they live. But I would argue that those people are probably some of the most fulfilled people ever. Imagine, imagine being able to spend your whole life doing the thing that you enjoy the most. That's what these people do. They develop that eye of the tiger, that, that killer mindset, and they just become absolutely obsessed with their craft. They pour everything that they have in it. They, they become a psychopath. If you want to achieve something that you've never achieved before, you're not going to be able to do that just by, you know, like devoting, you know, an hour a day. That's a good start. But if you want to, if you want to go to that next level, you need to dig deep inside of yourself and find that inner obsession, find that monster inside of you that will stop at nothing to achieve what it's wanting to achieve. The greatest artists throughout all of history, all of them have been viewed as insane. Name one genius that ain't crazy. Not a great mind has existed without a touch of madness. You need to just let go of being a normal person because if you're here, if you're trying to achieve, you know, your goals, relentlessly crush your goals, like the title says, you need to be willing to go to that next level and go to those places, those dark places that regular people aren't willing to go. You need to be able to develop those, that men the mental teeth, that beast mode that everybody's talking about. You know what beast mode is? It's, it's becoming obsessed. It's becoming a psychopath, that mad scientist. You will stop at nothing to achieve your goals. Leave the factory that I'm working at right now and just focus on being a coach full time. And the third is my personal fitness and my personal performance. I told you that I'm trying to run a Spartan race this year. So I'm really focusing on getting my running up while maintaining muscle and strength as much as I can. So those are the three things that I'm focusing on. And any other goal that I have that might come up, it does not matter. If it, if it happens, it happens. If it doesn't, it doesn't. It's cool. Like, like, for example, you know, like, uh, like hanging out with friends, like I will, I'll try and hang out with friends cause I'll try and stay social, but that is not the priority. I love my friends. I'm not, try, I'm not trying to be like a, like a jerk or anything by saying that too, by the way, I'm just saying like, that's not my priority. My priorities right now, personal brand, coaching, fitness. Those are my goals. Everything else is on the back burner. If it happens, it happens. If it doesn't, it doesn't. If I don't work towards those three things every single day, I feel like a piece of crap. I feel like I didn't put enough work in. I feel like I'm I'm losing in life. And it, you might think that that sounds sad and that sounds, you know, like not the way that you want to live. I use that as fuel. I think that's awesome. I think that there's nothing, there's no greater feeling than being obsessed with your goals and then making progress towards those goals. That is just the cool, that's just, there's nothing more fulfilling is the word for it. You can find a, something, it can be anything. You don't have to be a fitness coach. You don't have to, you know, start a coaching business at all. You don't even have to start a business. If you find a job that you like, if you find, you know, if there's a degree that you're going in and you, there's like, it's in a field that you're actually interested in, whatever it is that you're trying to accomplish, find something that you could just spend all day doing and just devote yourself to that. Become, get that eye of the tiger. It's all about that. Once you get the eye of the tiger, it's over, man. Then everybody else is just going to be trying to catch up with you. They're going to be looking at you like you're crazy, but then in five years, you know, you're going to be, you're going to be the best of the best and not the best of the best, but you're, you'll, you'll, you'll have made it in five years and people are going to understand why, why you were working so hard. But yeah, that's all I've got for you. So just a real quick recap of the five steps. No, number one is to write them down with a deadline. Number two is to change your identity. Number three is to understand your com that you have competition. Number four, learn to endure. And number five is to become that psychopath and develop the eye of the tiger and become obsessed with your craft. If you do these five things, then you're gonna start achieving your goals. I've, I've already started to implement these and I'm starting to see more progress than I have in the first five months of this year. In June, I've felt more 
on track than I have the rest of the five months of this from January to May combined. And I think these five steps are like a huge portion of that. So please, you know, um, t take these take these five principles, try them on whatever goal you want in your life. Make sure that you're not picking up too much or putting too much on your plate either. Like I said, pick like one to three major projects that you wanna work on and then make those your obsessions. Work on those, apply the five principles, the five steps, and I promise you, you are going to, you're going to see results uh, and you're probably going to start, to be honest with you, if you do all, do all five of these, you'll probably start seeing results in the first week. I'm not even kidding. So I hope this helps whatever you're doing, whether it be coaching, whether it be your fitness, whether it be, you know, studies, whatever it is, this is going to work for whatever it is that you're doing. So don't take it lightly. Uh, next video is going to either be, you know, probably another, it might be another fitness video. It might be about dealing with pain. I'm really hoping that this video does well, but it kind of depends uh, just on how the algorithm's doing. YouTube is, has not been <laughs> very kind to me recently, but you know, it is what it is. So if you made it this far, thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one. Peace.